Hello, Chi. Welcome to China Money Podcast. Hello. Pleasure. Earlier this month, the People's Bank of China announced another targeted bank reserve requirement ratio cut. Yes. And now the big question is, uh, will the PBOC do a cross-the-board RRR cut? What's your view? It depends. The, the PBOC's policy action in the coming months, I think, is very data-dependent. De- uh, data Depending on how the economy reacts to the selective RRR cuts in the past two months, and also uh, depending on the economy's reaction to the mini stimulus packages that, um, were, that were implemented in the past few months. Now, if the economy reacts well, and if you know, numbers that come out in the, in the coming months uh, show a recovery in the uh, economy, I don't think there's a need for an interest rate or another RR cut, uh, or universal RR cut. Um, I think uh, the PBOC is reserving uh, a universal cut in the RR or in even interest rates as the last resort. But that's not our base case for the time being, because we are still seeing the economy uh, recovering in the second half of this year, so that no major or drastic uh, monetary easing will be needed. Some economist has been arguing that um, across the board RRR cut is not going to stimulate bank lending that much. Do you agree? Overall, I do, because when you look at the smaller banks or the banks in the rural areas, they all have already had um, an excess, excess reserve ratio of 7%. So that means they have money, they're just not lending. So it doesn't really matter whether you, you give them more money in their pocket. It's, it, as long as they're not lending, that, there's no effect. So that part, we don't know. For the other banks, they also have excess, excess reserve ratios to the na- in the neighborhood of 2 to 3%, which means that in addition to the 20% they are uh, uh, required to, to put aside at the central bank, they're already putting aside 22 23%. So if you give them more money again, and if there's no reason for them to lend out the money, then the RR cut won't be effective. Now let's move on to the property sector. The slowdown, yes, but um, the, the overwhelming consensus among Chinese economists and analysts and strategists um, is that there won't be a housing bubble burst like in the US market, far from it. Tell us why. Because you look at the, um, the nature of the, the Chinese property market, there is at least two markets within the property market in China. But you break down the data into tier one, tier two cities as one group, and then the rest tier three, four, five cities as another group, you see big bubbles in the tier three, four, five cities. Because prices there have been rising on the expectation of demand coming to catch up with supply. So people keep building and then keep asking for higher prices. There has been no uh, very strong underlying demand. But there has been always underlying demand, very strong underlying demand in the first, uh, the, the, the first tier and the second tier cities, in you know, Beijing, Guangzhou, Shenzhen. Everybody wants to live in them. Everybody wants to buy a house there. So in another word, you see prices continue to rise in first tier and second no. tier cities? No. What I see is that there's uh, much less price correction in the tier one, tier two cities than in the other cities. In the current downturn, but long term, you, th- you think they're going to still rise, right? Yes, uh, long term, I think what we are seeing is um, technically, if you plot the um, property price um, you know, in a graph, uh, we are likely to see in the 10, 15, 20 years horizon, that we'll, we're likely to see ascending bottoms. You know, cycles comes in peaks and bottoms, but you know, every successive, every new bottom is going to be higher than the previous bottom. Because that's the nature of the Chinese property market, that you always have excess demand. What, what the problem that we are facing today in the Chinese property market is not so much of a bubble thing, it's more of an allocation problem, a misallocation of houses between tier 1, tier 2 cities and tier 3, tier 4, tier 5 cities. A lot of people also believe that the 3%, around 3% depreciation mm. of the RMB so far this year is only a temporary phrase of the, the currency, that long term the RMB is going back to its appreciation on trend. Yes. Do you agree? Yes. I've held that appreciation view for the past, I don't know, I came back for Hong, from, to Hong Kong for more than 10 years now. I've been holding that view for more than 10 years. And that view is going to still going to be valid at least for another two or three years. Thank you so much, Chi. Pleasure.